All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Mike Lindsley with you. It is nine minutes with me on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm going to do an extensive Facebook Live tomorrow, way longer than this, but this will suffice today. Running out of time. Today is flying, and we are brought to you by Bryant and Stratton College and Brian Conboy of Mass Mutual New York State. Put money away today, benefit tomorrow, your financial well being. With Brian Conboy, we're also brought to you by the Manor Bakehouse Cafe and our very good friends at Timberbanks Golf Club. Baseball postseason is here as I am recording this. We have a one-to-one -one deadlock tie in the seventh inning between the Brewers and the Cubs. We got the wild card later uh, with the Dodgers and the Rockies, and then obviously the AL wild card. Well, actually, I should say the playoff, Rockies and Dodgers. We got to figure out who's going to win the game here this afternoon and then the game later on around 4, 4.30. Uh, and then those clubs will then go and, and play a wild card game as well. So it's a little extra, 163rd, so to speak, for the baseball season. And then the AL wild card will take place on Wednesday in New York between the A's and the Yankees. I want to kind of get into a, a, a couple of things to look for in the postseason, some X factors. And the two teams, I wouldn't personally want to play. Now, look, do you want to play anybody this time of year? They're obviously the cream of the crop rising to the top. As the song says, all these teams are here for a reason. They're all very, very good. But in the National League, I wouldn't want to play the team that's playing right now. And that's the road team in the Milwaukee Brewers. I, they may lose this game to the Cubs and end up being the wild card team. But this is the exact team that reminds me of the 03 Marlins, that reminds me of the 07 Rockies, that reminds me of so many other teams that have gone like the last month and a half of the season, and they just have not slowed down. They've probably got the MVP winner in Kristen Yelich. He's been a triple crown contender. Their bullpen is out of control good. I mean, when you can throw in Soria, and you can throw in uh, uh, a Hader, and you can throw in uh, Knebel and all these other guys, that bullpen is lights out from the left, from the right, and they all throw super heat. The Brewers are a legit team. In the National League, I mean, look, they could lose in the wild card game or they could go to the World Series. That's how how baseball is. But that's the team I would not want to play in the um, in in the National League. And the team I wouldn't want to play in the American League, believe it or not. I mean, I know how hard it is to get back to a World Series and and, and all the rest. Houston, who wants Houston? Why would you want to face that rotation with Verlander and Keuchel? and Morton, okay, and all these guys who know how to handle themselves in, in October now. They're super deep. They have a plethora of aces. They've got a ridiculously good lineup that now is finally intact. Remember, they had injuries with Carlos Correa, Jose Altuve, and George Springer over the course of the season. Those guys are all healthy now, and Alex Bregman is a hell of a player who lives for the moment. So to me, you can tell me all you want about the Yankee offense. You can tell me all day long about the Red Sox winning well over 100 games as well. You can tell me about the Cleveland Indians, how they're not being appreciated and talked about enough and all that. Well, the Cleveland Indians have been in the playoffs since, I don't know, six weeks before the season started because that division was going to be so piss poor and it lived up to that toilet bowl division uh, that we thought it was going to be uh, in, in, in spring training. I just think when you take a look at the situation with the Houston Astros, they may not get back to the World Series, but that's the team I want nothing to do with across the board. A.J. Hinch now has a World Series win under his belt. That team's been through the fights of the postseason. I wouldn't want anything to do with the Houston Astros. Now, as far as some X-Factor players to look at in each league, I think you got to go back to Milwaukee with Jesus Aguilar. This guy here is a superstar player, but he's one of those guys who, if he goes two for four with a big home run somewhere, that will tilt the series if it becomes that into the favor uh, in favor of the Milwaukee Brewers. I think another big time X factor that you really really have to look at uh, in this postseason is collectively the young players for the Atlanta Braves. This is a team that won the National League East. They arrived a little bit early. They got Elbies. They've got Acuna. They've got Dansby Swanson. They got a nice core of young players there. You have to wonder though how the postseason will be. A, a lot of times for rookies in any sport. In you know, the first time they get there, it's a whoa, deer in the headlights moment. You learn how to lose and you come back and win and you use that experience, right? Well, it didn't happen for the Europeans in the Ryder Cup, apparently. Nice job, USA, once again over there on European soil. But I'm very, I'm very, very interested to see how these guys react to the postseason scene in terms of Acuna, Junior, Elbis, and um, 
uh, of course, uh, uh, Dansby Swanson. When you go to the to, to some of the other uh, uh, X Factor type players, the Red Sox bullpen. You know, to me, Craig Kimbrell is not afraid of getting the four out save. He's not afraid of getting multiple inning saves and all the rest. He's got that resume. He's done it before. He's still a little shaky, I know. But what about the guys leading up to? That 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 Red Sox closer. I I mean those guys are all really really shaky. And another X factor is going to be any one guy out of the rotation to perform extremely well for the Boston Red Sox. They need one of those guys who really doesn't have a postseason resume in terms of David Price and Chris Sale and the rest. They need one of those guys to actually come through and dominate in Justin Verlander type form. We'll see if they can get one of those guys. X factors for me, Yankees. You got to look at a couple players with the New York Yankees X factor wise. You've got to look at John Carlos Stanton. This is his first postseason in a Yankee uniform. How is he going to react? Now he's a superstar player, but he hasn't been there before. And you know, how is he going to handle the bright lights of New York? Is he going to be able to 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 do the right things and uh, not get overwhelmed by the moment and all the rest? I mean, to me, if John Carlos Stanton, you know, has a boomer bust uh, a playoff. That could be all the difference in the world for the Yankees. All they need is one or two more guys in that lineup to just completely go bananas. And I would also put Gary Sanchez into the mix here as well for the same reason offensively as Giancarlo Stanton that, that, that I still think that him with two or three swings of the bat, he can completely change the game like, like nobody else. Did you see the ball he hit at Fenway the other day? I mean, this guy is still a wonderful, wonderful hitter. And then, of course, he's a major X factor because let's be honest right now. Let's be honest. Kerry Sanchez behind the plate is a disaster. And so we'll see if he starts, by, well, he will start behind the plate, but we'll see if he costs the Yankees at all with pass balls. I'm looking forward to watching the Oakland Athletics rotation. When you take a look at guys like Fears and you look at Cahill, uh, that rotation to me is an X factor in the postseason. You'll see them right away in the wild card game in New York. And then I think a couple other X factors I have would be probably for the LA Dodgers. I'm looking at I'm looking at at, at Yasiel Puig. I really am because in a in, in a deep lineup, you know they're going to be centered in on Justin Turner. They're going to be centered on on a bunch of guys, but that lineup is so deep. You can bat Yasiel Puig seventh. He's a 30 home run potential guy. But again, Yasiel Puig is a flair for the dramatic type player. If he gets hot, if he gets moving in the right direction. He gets streaky in a good way. That changes the entire outlook of the Dodger offense. And again, in the postseason, you got to pick other people up. A few guys struggle here and there. A couple other guys pick you up. That was what was so good about the 96 to 2003 New York Yankees. You have three, four, five, six guys sometimes not playing well. And all of a sudden, Chuck Knobloch and Tino Martinez would pick them up. Or uh, you'd have Paul O'Neill and Bernie Williams pick everybody up. Or maybe it was Jeter and somebody else. Teams pick each other up in the big-time spots in the postseason. So I would look at those X factors in both leagues in 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 the Major League Baseball playoffs. Uh, you know who to who to watch, what to watch for. Um, it's going to be amazing. I mean, you got the Cubs and the Brewers in this thing. Who knows who wins this today? Uh, somebody will win the division. One will win the wild card. Same thing with the Rockies, Dodgers, and the NL West. You got the upstart Braves. You got the Yankees back in it. Uh, you've got the Red Sox winning over 100 games, winning the East. You got the Indians that nobody's talking about that's still a very, very uh, big time juggernaut. And then you got the defending champion, Houston Astros. These baseball playoffs are going to be absolutely terrific. Hit me on Twitter at Mike L Sports. We are brought to you by your State Farm agent, Matt Graham, the Burton Diner, the Allen Angus Pub, and Lakeshore Yacht and Country Club. This is Nine Minutes with Mike Lindsley on IGTV, YouTube, and Facebook. Hit my podcast on iTunes as well, the ML Sports Platter. As I've always said to you, enjoy the games.